Hello everyone, I'm sure at least someone here has watched the rocket or a plane lift into the skies with all and thought to themselves, how on earth do these things work? Well, my name is here at Malik Lu and I've definitely asked that question way too many times. Anyway, today I'm going to be talking a bit about how anyone watching this can actually experience what we humans have learned about aerodynamics and space for themselves without needing to spend a lot of money or time. But why should you care about any of this? Now, I'm gonna be honest here, I'm just a teenager who thinks anything that flies is cool. Why should anyone really care about things that aren't bound to the ground, let alone things that leave the planet entirely? Why is any of this important, especially when we're facing a changing world with new problems that we've never encountered before, such as climate change or resource scarcity? Well, there are probably countless other complex, well thought out reasons on why you should care that the more knowledgeable individuals could give you. But I can still give you one very good reason. It's quite simple. It's all about ingenuity. From the Wright brothers to the countless people working in aerospace fields today, all of them bring ideas never thought of before to the table. Being clever and innovative are qualities that have brought us to where we are here today, and are qualities that have solved almost every major problem we face and probably will face in the future. By experiencing and learning from innovations and discoveries made in these fields, anyone can improve their own capacity to become more open-minded and be able to solve problems using approaches that you wouldn't have thought of before. Anyway, let's cut to the chase. So, let's start with one of the things that anyone could really easily do in order to experience some aerospace for themselves. Building a rocket. Okay, well not a massive, you know, go-to-space type of rocket, but a functional model rocket. Of course, that might still sound quite intimidating, but really not that hard. There are a bunch of websites where you can order a variety of rocket-related equipment, uh, ranging from parachutes to motors to ready-to-build beginner kits that anyone could pick up, build, and launch in under 45 minutes. Although technically building uh, rockets is rocket science, uh, understanding how the rockets work and how you're meant to be building them is pretty simple. Almost all of the beginner kits come with informative manuals on rockets with information on how to build and safely launch them. And if you need anything extra, there are plenty of great online resources available to anyone who searches the internet for a bit. However, obviously there are some things that you just have to be keeping in your mind in order to make sure everyone is kept safe. One of the most important aspects is to make sure that you're launching from a safe place. The recommended area you need is almost always written on the packaging that comes with a rocket or the motors themselves, and are also often published by the manufacturers on their websites. However, you should still try to use common sense and the largest, emptiest available area for you. I've had a few uh, personal uh, close calls where even though I used the recommended area, the rocket flew more than expected and could have potentially hit someone. So make sure that you've explicitly been allowed to launch in your location because here in Norway, the laws regarding these activities are also quite strict. And if it does hit anyone on the head, you are going to be responsible. So just keep in mind that you need to make sure the area you're launching from is safe and clear and as large as possible. With that being said, I've learned quite a lot about how rockets are kept aerodynamically stable, how solid mo fuel motors work, and about how the various different forces affect the flying object, as well as having a ton of fun with model rockets. Whenever I launch rockets and at that moment of anticipation, followed by the sound of the motor and seeing that little thing go up to the sky, it's, it's really cool actually, and you know, anyone else who watches it, it finds it cool as well. And so much so that I actually ended up wanting to build my own rockets. And fortunately, I had a school project at that time, which allowed me to build a product and learn something from it. So in the end, I made a rocket in a launch pad, and the rocket could reach around the height of around 100 uh, meters. And I used the only stuff that you could uh, find at home to build this rocket. Now, due to legal and also logical reasons, you can't just make your own propellant or motor, especially here in Norway. Uh, what I did was use one of the motors made by a reliable company that were sold online, especially for this purpose of, you know, making a model rocket. Uh, and if, you're, if you ever end up wanting to build your own rocket, I highly recommend this. Uh, the materials I used for my rocket were really, really simple. It's just a tissue paper roll for the body, some wooden fins, and a plastic bag as a parachute to name some of the parts. Uh, and the launch, the launch pad was a cutout spear of metal from a tray and my mom's knitting needle as uh, a guide rail. Uh, but in the end, everything took around under 600 uh, knock, so it's, it's, not, it's a cheap alternative if you want to ever attempt it yourself. 
uh, astronomy is another great way that you can get involved in with uh, space and learn about the different celestial bodies, their features, or the nebulae and galaxies floating around space. So, although I haven't had as much experience with telescopes uh, as I have with model rockets, I've still learned a good deal about the features of the moon's surface and finding a needle in the haystack, which is probably something that you might experience if you're trying to find another planet uh, with your telescope for the first time. Uh, even though you might just be looking at a moon for your first few nights, the sense of wonder and awe you can get from looking at another world's uh, surface is, you know, truly wonderful, actually. Uh, you can get good quality beginner telescopes at around uh, 1,200, uh, 2,000 knock, and fortunately, instant Bangalore light pollution is not that big of a problem, so you can probably set up a telescope in your backyard and at the very least be able to observe the moon and its terrain features if the sky is clear. Uh, but for the re best re results, I would personally recommend driving some distance out of town and uh, trying to look at skies there. But you know, just keep in mind that we do live in a cold and rainy place and you're not going to be able to gaze at the skies every night. Um, of course, astronomy and model rocketry are just a few of the activities you can involve yourself in to learn about space and aerodynamics. Another hobby that is quite educational is flying and building remote controlled planes, where you have many opportunities to learn about the various forces that affect flying objects and get a really good understanding of how planes fly. In addition to these activities, there are plenty of great different games that you, could, that you really shouldn't underestimate in your teaching potential, such as the Kerbal Space Program or the Microsoft Flight Simulators. And obviously, keep in mind that the internet is a great tool. There are tons of online resources, as well as books, uh, which anyone who is interested in can just pick up and learn new concepts from. In the end, I just want to make it clear to everyone uh, that's watching right now that you all have the potential to become an expert in any aerospace-related field. There are so many easy ways to learn about these supposedly very complicated things, and although you might be overwhelmed to begin with, you just have to start and not be afraid. Gazing out at places beyond our world and understanding how we might get there one day will help you think more creatively and become familiar with concepts normally hard to grasp. You might find it inspires you to come up with some out-of-the-box ideas for dealing with common problems you might personally experience. Who knows, maybe even one of you might make your own rocket and next time someone talks to you, you could claim to be a rocket scientist and technically be correct. Anyway, thank you for taking your time and listening to this video.